What's up guys and gals and welcome back to the Nerdcast for the first episode in our coverage of Sticks: Shards of Darkness. You might remember a while back that we checked out the first game in this series and I found Sticks to actually be like a tremendously likable character. I really, really liked him and it might just be my obsession with goblins and orcs. I really like goblins and orcs. In every setting, goblins and orcs are badass. But I found him to be a character that you really, really wanted to like. You wanted to be on his side. You wanted to ally yourself with him. Uh, when I was playing the first game, and so when the second one came out, I thought to myself, you know what would be awesome? Let's do a short series and see if this would be the kind of thing that anybody else in the Nerd Castle would be into, because that's what I like to do here at the Nerd Castles. I like to play games, leave them unedited, so that you can figure out if the gameplay experience is what you want before you purchase the game. That's the kind of content I used to consume, so that's the kind of content I like to produce. So without further ado, let's get ourselves a balls deep up in some stealth gameplay, see if we can knife some fools and be super scary and gangster for a little bit with sticks, shards of darkness. I figure we'll just go with initiate. It looks like we got four difficulty settings all the way up to master. And in fact, the higher difficulties, they get rid of melee combat so you can't even fight back. Yeah, melee attacks kill you in one hit. Wow, gnarly. I will probably just go with initiated. I've played the first game. I'm not a stealth master, though. I'm not a master of the shadows. I wish I was. That's a pretty cool title, Master of the Shadows, but it's one that I've never gotten. That many guards in one place must be a whorehouse. <laughs> Even better, it's the guards' monthly payroll delivery. A delivery of vegetables, more our style. Let the pro do the hard work, then it's easy pickings for us. Ha 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 ha! What was I thinking when I took a job in this scummy rat hole? Watch your ass! What? You pushed me, you drunken piece of shit! Crazy alarm! A thief got in! Alarm! Oh, alarm! Get me out of here, damn it! Hi there. I'm the new accountant. Let the pro do the hard work. <laughs> Smoking's bad for you boys. Real bad. So as you can tell, Styx is kind of a badass. As I understand it in this world, I think that goblins are like secondhand citizens or something like that, as I recall. Like, they're either fresh out of slavery or they're still traded like slaves. I can't really recall. It's been a long, long time since the last game came out. Like, seriously. It's probably been a good four years now that I'm thinking about it. So, for several decades, the people of the Empire have been fighting to stem the invasion of goblins. 
the Green Plague. To contain the scores, the humans have created squads that specialized in the extermination of goblins, the carnage, but it takes more than that to worry Styx, who now lives in the shadow of the human village, Thoban. A slum populated by crooks of all kind and stuck in the middle of the swamps. His talents have earned him some renown, and an old scoundrel named Ephron has recently contacted him for a tailor-made job, stealing the caskets containing the guards' pay. I don't know if this is a prequel to the first game, or if it's a sequel. But either way, the first game that Styx was in was called Of Orcs and Men, where he was kind of the small guile character, and there was a big dude, too. There was a big muscular guy. I keep wondering if they're going to bring him back. The first game, though, you did, like, some legendary thieving, so I'm assuming that this is before that, maybe, because you stole, like, the world tree or something. It was, like, Yggdrasil that you were looking for in the first game. It's been a while since I've been in this part of Thor. There's nothing left standing. You've turned into a real shithole. I'm proud of your work. No wonder the Greenskins ain't welcome around here. Gone! Beat it, Rakash! Can't stand staring at your stupid face any longer. All right, so we can move the camera around. Uh, WASD is going to... Ooh, the movement feels more fluid than the first game. That's for sure. I noticed that straight off the bat is that the movement feels quite a bit better than the first game. We have a walk mode right there, so we got to reach the back of the building. Can I climb that right there? So we can crouch underneath here. Cool. Every single level should have a bunch of collectibles and things you can find, too. Yeah, I remember turning out torches. It's time to switch off the light, kitties, or little meanie sticks will come and eat you. <laughs> and then I do remember looking through peepholes and trying to figure out where stuff was at. Yeah, so I remember that mechanic. Go ahead and open this thing on up. Get low. I'm glad that they didn't, like, bind anything to control because, frankly, I've been playing uh, Ghost Recon. If I screw up, it's either squishy on the rocks or a dose of death by drowning. But I ain't the screwing up type. That is true. Styx is a, uh, he's the consummate professional when it comes to thieving. And see, so if there's one thing you got from the first game, it's that he's really, really good at what he does. And actually, the game holds you up to that standard, which is one of the things I liked about the first game, too. Let's see, we got, oh yeah, Amber Vision. I forgot about that. Oh, cool. Iron Ore. Yeah, I forgot about Amber Vision. He's got this thing that he can do where he can, like, see valuable stuff. That's not a treasure chest. It's actually a hiding spot that you can get inside of. And so interactive elements can be highlighted. Like that one right there that allow you to climb up. All in all, though, the mechanics pretty much feel the same. Am I constrained to this? Can I fall off of it? Okay. I wanted to make sure it wasn't using, like, the Assassin's Creed mechanic where you're basically stuck to a surface unless you press the space bar. And until you press the space bar, nothing bad can happen. Uh, we can right-click to fall off a ledge. Okay. And then we can shimmy off underneath here. I was trying to get a feel for how that works, too, because I'm a big ledge hanger. I like ledges a lot. I tend to hang off of them pretty aggressively in stealth games. Alright, so we got to reach the back of the building. Go ahead and give ourselves a little leap right here. Was there anything down inside of there that looked interesting? Just a torch and nothing else. Well, if there's not a down there, I'm just not going to care about it. Uh, can we monkey swing over this thing? Yeah, there we go. Monkey bars, monkey bars, going far, working out my pectorals. Now for some climbing. Now for some climbing. I always liked his voice, too. I think that's the other part of it, is the voice actor did a really good job with sticks. Say what you will about the rest of the voice acting cast. And if I remember the way this works, you actually hold down the direction on WASD that you want to go. So, for example, that next handhold, it would be kind of like a a diagonal. So you'd hold down A and W at the same time. Whereas, oh, I can go up right here. Okay, good. I didn't see that part. Good old climbing puzzles. I do kind of feel like I'm going away from my... I should think about making this my new hideout. Nice, quiet neighborhood. Good shopping. And the view ain't too bad. Uh, hell, man. You gotta check those real estate prices. Get yourself a realtor. That's the only thing that bugged me about that show, uh, Santa Clarita Diet, is the way they say realtor. They're like, realtor? If you've ever watched the show, you'll know what I mean. They say realtor weird. They say it oddly. They're like, it's a realtor. Ha 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 ha. Alright. I'm mad, however you want to I assume we're gonna be able to craft in this game, because we're picking up things that look like crafting items to me. I mean, what else would iron ore be used for, you know? Aside from crafting. Oh, yeah, we got ourselves a little Heidi. Ooh, I can craft. Yeah, what's up with the crafting table? 
So, with the iron ore that I have, I can make myself either bolts or I can make, what are those? Vials of life. Life is so vile. We've got four bolts already. Oh, we get times four, maybe. Cool. Well, the game's got crafting. It's brought in modern gaming. You can't have a modern game that doesn't have crafting in it. It's just the way this works. With these grates and grills right here, later on you get the ability to like turn into fart gas or something like that. If I remember right. And the fart gas will allow you to sneak through those. Wait, can I get in that hole up there? Is that possible? It's a question I frequently asked myself in life. I probably can, but... I don't know if I want to spend a bunch of time dicking around with it. We got over to here. We can swing down this way. I probably would have chosen to... What is that right there? What is this used for? Remember, Joe, you should never go out without a handful of sand in your pocket. Yeah, pocket sand, man. If it gets the job done, it gets the job done. So, we can hold down that to open an items menu. Yeah, pocket sand. <laughs> Alright, get him with the gribble offensive. That's how you do it, man. If it worked for Dale, it works for us. Oh, I wanted to see if that would work. I wasn't 100% that I was going to be able to do that. Just trying to get creative with the movement right now. Like, move in ways that the game doesn't want me to. Because every now and again, you can make a level a lot simpler by doing something a little bit janky. It was like that in the first title, too. Like, there would obviously be, like, the expected route, and then every now and again, you could just do something hella gnarly, like jumping around a corner and get it to do something you didn't really... Is there anything down there? Does that not even matter? Sorry, I'm a pack rat, so I kind of want all this stuff. I thought it was going to make me assassinate him, but that doesn't seem like a very kind thing to do to your kinsmen. So we have a, what is that, an insect egg? And then we've also got an unstable spore. That's a spore that flies off the handle real, real easy. He just never got his temper under control. He was never able to do it. I don't remember if barrels were in the first game. I remember the boxes being in the first game. And I remember snuffing out lanterns in the first game. But I don't recall. Yeah, I almost fell to my death right there. And you're damn right. I'm just going to move forward without mentioning it. <laughs> um, I remember in the first game, I don't recall barrels in the first game. I remember the boxes. And I remember using... Amber vision and stuff like that. I definitely remember that, but. That's such a complicated door mechanism, like. Can't just have, like, a normal door, you know? The chandelier. The saboteur's handy, buddy. If they come on hooked at just the right moment, they can create. Mm, carnage. <laughs> it's a trap! Yeah. You can do a lot of fun stuff with chandeliers in this game. There were a couple kills in the first game where I was able to kill, like, three and four guys at the same time just by making a chandelier drop, and nobody's suspicious about it. They just accept it. They're just like, oh, yeah, a chandelier fell, and everybody's dead now. You're like, really? That's you're not no investigation, huh? You're not even going to look around a tiny bit, not even for a second. Nah, that's good. What do I get paid? Like, nothing? What is a guard salary in medieval times? It couldn't have been that good, right? Because you're basically a paid mook to get stabbed. You're just a body to get stabbed when shit goes down. So that, like, your lord and whoever else doesn't get stabbed. Yeah, it probably wanted me to climb out through there. But I'm going to go ahead and have another look around just to make sure. We ain't left nothing behind. Yeah. There's lots of ways through the levels in this game. So if you like stuff like Deus Ex and... I'm trying to think of other games like Deus Ex that allowed you, like, multiple paths through. I guess the new Metal Gear kind of did that. Uh, if you like stuff like that, sticks will probably be right up your alley. It's the sort of game where there's a lot of paths to the destination you're trying to get to. And you can really just kind of pick and choose between them. What is that? An acid solution. So I've got an acid solution. Oh yeah, I can dissolve bodies. Cool. I don't remember if that was in the first game either. Why does he fondle the doorknob in order... Like, he fondles the locking mechanism in order to get the door open. Maybe that was locked from the inside. Now it's open, so I don't have to worry about it anymore. Can I pick up whatever that is? What is that? Ooh, a vial of life. Yeah. Okay. Alright, Buzz. I got you. Somebody who's a Buzz Lightyear fan on the development staff. We can tell. I sincerely doubt that I want to go down that way. I don't think anything's going to... Oh, cool, you can swing on ropes now, like Tarzan style. Danielle, forget about it. 
cool. And then we've also got raw amber, which I think amber is like a currency or something like that in this game. I don't remember. Can I tear this? Oh, there's a wanted poster over there. Is there like another way around? Um, underneath doesn't look like it has anything going on. I can climb up the rope too. Okay. Cool. Without too much trouble, I've got him up and swanging. So we're gonna. Ah, the carnage has begun training recruits. Well, this is gonna be short and sweet. How long will two against one take him? So I'll probably want to take them down. It looks like we could take cover against a wall by holding down right click. That's gonna be like our contextual thing. I was just trying to make sure nobody's seen me. I don't want to get in trouble. Let's tear down this wanted poster in here because we got to look out for our people. We got to, we got to represent, man. We are a proud goblin with proud. For attacking, reaping, neutralizing, and annihilating all goblins to be eradicated. C A R N A G E. <sighs> Crap name. I must have been paying the guy who wrote it by the letter. They're really scraping the barrel if they're recruiting here in Shitville, Thoba. Given the scum that live around here, better tear down these posters. Otherwise, this little toilet of paradise will turn into a real stinking hell. Oh no! You've been slain. You're now dead. What has happened to you? Oh, they wanted me to move quicker. I'm not a big merciful guy when I play games like this, so if there's going to be like a bonus for not killing anybody after it gives me the ability to kill anybody, I'm just not going to get that bonus. I just watched these dudes murder my goblin homies simply based on the fact that they were born goblins. It's time to go gnarly in here. It's time to get some. It's time to get some. We got to get some and get back. You see what we found during the last raid? Yeah, nice one. I was sure it'd disappear since the fall of Akinash. Me too. We'll make a ton of money out of it. I hope you've stashed it somewhere safe. Of course. What do you take me for? I hid it in the old secret room. Oh. The one behind the bookcase? Shh. Why not just shout it from the rooftops? A hiding place behind a bookcase. Talk about originality. All right. Let's go have a little look out for that, too. Yeah, they got a bunch of guards over here. There's also a thing I can pick up right there. Hell yeah, a vial of amber. Looks like we got a couple of wanted posters in the area, so let's get rid of those. In addition, I wouldn't feel too bad about trying to get some of these secondary objectives taken care of. I don't see anything too rowdy in here, although there's a thing on the ground right there. A poisonous spore. I think that was a crafting material. Probably use it for some kind of poison dart or something. Let's also give ourselves the advantage of the dark there. Can I dump him in the water? Is that possible? Just in case so nobody finds him. Goodbye. Don't worry. Your family will forget about you. They'll get a new dad. It's okay. You're easily replaceable. Damn it. Fall off the edge, you prick. All I want to do is hide your death from your family so they never have closure. Is that too much to ask? That's all I've ever wanted. Because I'm a dark, evil person like that. What is it now? Alright, so they wanted me to spawn a clone over here. And then if I swap over to here, detach a shipment to create a diversion. Oh, I didn't even know that was an option. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and drop. Oh, 
there's a climbing spot over here. I was going to say I don't see the method by which I'm supposed to be getting up. But there it was, right in the corner. Diversion, create it. And there's all kinds of stuff like this in the Sticks games that you won't notice the first time through. And then you'll just be like, what the shit, you know? Like, you'll go through the hard way, and then you'll play the level again later, like, a little bit slower, trying to look for how you, like, messed up the previous time. You'll be like, oh, there's a thing right here where I could have created a diversion. Damn. That's what's kind of cool about the game, in my opinion. The gear on this bench looks usable. With a few raw materials, I should be able to put together some nasty surprises. That's cool. I like nasty surprises. I also like clean surprises, surprises that come without a stink, but, you know, that's fine. So we can create some bolts, we can create some vials of life right now. Make the vials of life. And then we'll get the bolts made too. Are you sure? Are you positive there's an intruder? Can I close doors behind me? Apparently, I'm stealing a document. There's a dude right there. Oh, I like how they added eye lines to the game. That's pretty cool. I don't think there was eye lines in the first game. Like, I think you just kind of had to guess where it was all at. Oh, yeah, you can poison food. I forgot you could even do that. Heh, <laughs> I put fart gas in your apples. How do you like them apples? Not much, right? Because you're going to fall over dead and just... Argh. I mean, I could have just stabbed him to death, though. It would have been faster. Goodbye, ex-human. used to be a human. Now you're just a corpse. Ooh, yeah. You want to pick up those coins right there. I don't like how you're judged based on your speed. It's a stealth game. Like... It's my lucky day. The casket distribution list. <laughs> Good luck to the fool who gets to even up the bill. Basically, I don't like things that put me on a timer in a game. I feel like there's way too much focus on speedrunning shit when way too few people actually like speedrun stuff. Like, in real life, I work in YouTube. I don't know anybody. I work on YouTube and Twitch, and I don't know anybody that does speedruns. And yet it seems like nowadays every single game has some kind of speedrun setting, weirdly enough. I haven't seen a bookcase or anything. Oh, yeah, there it is. Yeah, buddy. Secret room where I get all the stuff I want. That's a rare vintage. This one's going in the cellar. I don't remember what vials of amber do. Well, I'm going to take this dude. I'm going to take this dude. Welcome to prom, bitch. Death to your larynx. Death to it. And then I think I could pick him up. And if there's like a storage crate around here, I'm pretty sure I can just load his dumb ass into a storage crate. So there it is. My name is Splattercat. This is the first episode of Styx Shards of Darkness. If you liked what you saw so far, I always have a link for you down below. This game's not going to be out for a little while, though, so you're going to you're gonna have to use some patience, all right? I will see you all in tomorrow's episode. Thank you for stopping on in. We will continue to appraise and check out this game as we move forward, kind of pointing out this, that, and the other in future episodes, all right? Uh, let me know how I can do better. Always leave lots of comments down below. I am interested in your feedback because I want to improve. I want to get better at what it is I do here on the internet. It's never a good thing to get comfortable with your skill sets. You should always be trying to make them better and mo' better and mo' better. Oh, shit, there's enemies over there. All right. I'll see you all next time. Bye, everybody.